I come from a rough background, and I, I, I saw uh, a lot of shit growing up. I had to see the devastation on my mum's face when she came back from Young Offenders Prison to wish my little brother happy birthday on his 18th. Then he progressed to a big prison. I know the human cost of prison. But what frustrates me is that the taxpayer forks out 38 grand a year to keep each of Britain's 88,000 prisoners banged up. Yet only 10% of them do any full-time work. My plan's pretty straightforward. This is about getting them working, off their arse, and then working. Hey, boy, reps, what's going on? I'm going to try and set up a business behind bars, getting prisoners cooking on the inside to sell on the outside. We're going to make some fairy cakes. <laughs> <laughs> what's the secret of a good fairy cake? Well, and a fucking clue, but I like it. Okay. I've given myself six months inside one of Britain's toughest prisons. Come, Come out to the toilet. Yeah, yeah. I'll smash you to pieces. To see if I can get the inmates working and earning. Who else has eaten the tarts? You've eaten one as well. This is an absolute joke. And they're just walking all over the place. But the prisoners aren't the only ones I'm fighting. The system has to come first. If he really messes up, he'll be out. So frustrating. Scott Shegg made my prisoners local in Brixton. <laughs> they can spit in it, they can lay it on the floor, they could do anything. Gordon's in for a shock, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe I'm the next Gordon Ramsay. Maybe I'm the black Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Learning to become a great cook, a good cook, an average cook, takes time. Stick your jaw up your ass. If there's one thing these guys have got on their side, it's time. If anything kicks off and it goes a little bit pear-shaped, then it's not going to be a, a friendly place to be in the middle of. Britain's prison population is exploding. It's increased by 22,000 in the last decade and cost almost two billion a year. It just seems a complete waste. The amount of money that we spend to keep these guys in there, this is costing us a fortune. There are some prison work schemes. The government say they want to create more, but in cash-trapped Britain, few offenders graft full-time to pay anything back. The whole purpose of this is to get in there, set up a business, and to get them grafted. So I'm giving my time and energy to see if I can get offenders earning. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, it's Gordon Ramsay. It's taken nine months to persuade the Ministry of Justice to let me try and set up my pilot business in the notorious HMP Brixton. Jesus, the size of that wall. Wait on the ones for us, please. The governor's put the word out about my idea, and a few of the prisoners are curious about my plan to cook on the inside and sell on the outside. Right, that's the ones for me and my downstairs. Right. ID. Have you got a mobile phone as well, please? Mobile phone, yeah. Brixton is a Victorian Category B prison with 800 inmates, locked up for anything from shoplifting to murder. Mr. Ramsey. Morning. How are you doing? How are you? Mark Westergaard. Welcome Mark. to Brixton. Thank you. Um, OK. Um, you've handed all your personal items into the gate there? Uh, yeah, phone and... Your phone uh, and everything like yeah, that. Passport. I remind you to do that every day that you come. Certainly, of OK, course. let's no go inside. Passport. Officer Mark Westgarth is taking me into the heart of the prison. Here, the prisoners are kept in their cells up to 21 hours a day. If he tries to mug me off, I'll put him right in his place. I'm not about that. No problem. I mean, I'm not here to be made fun of by him or anyone else. A lot of these people believe that they're going to do this and their lives will dramatically change. Well, nothing about Ramsey. He can be a bit fierce with people that he's working with. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> I think he would lose a few people along the way. That's how it goes, you know, only the strong survive. Hey, 
The prisoners are housed in five separate wings. I have no idea who I'm going to be working with. If he's come here to change the world, I don't think he will. And I don't think long term it's going to, going to be a winner. And how many uh, prisoners are in here? Uh, I believe it's 220. Wow. Come on in. Ninety percent of the criminals on this wing have serious drug or alcohol problems. Oh, they'll go hey. to the kitchen and sort it out, yeah? Uh, it's fucking <laughs> bullshit down there, mate. Oi, oi. Oh, God, oh, mate. Gordon, I can't believe it's you, mate. <laughs> you, look, you look just like you look on TV. <laughs> and you look better with the other tooth head. Thank you. Have you got one in the middle coming? No, no, that's just my gap. That's, that, yeah, that's my selling point. That's why I'm Gordon. Can you cook? Of course I can cook. What was the last thing you cooked? Last thing I cooked was paella. Paella? Yeah, paella. I could cook paella. I could cook, um Mean lasagna. Mean lasagna. Miss <laughs> Abram, how are you, sir? No, mate, he's working with Jamie Oliver. <laughs> Toes, unlock! It's lunchtime. The prisoners are let out of their cell for a few brief moments to collect their food. It's a chance for me to go face to face with some of my potential workers. Um, obviously, you signed up. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you cook? Yeah. Have you got a party going on all that bread? <laughs> Mr. Kelly, uh, so you signed up? Yeah. I'm... Are you keen to learn? Yeah. Good. Can you cook? No, I can't cook. I'll try it. I'll have a go. Can you fry an egg? Yeah, yeah of course you can. Can you poach an egg? Basic. Yeah, not really. Can you scramble an egg? Yeah. Good. I'll have a go. Mr. Jones. When was the last time you cooked? Tonight. Um, well, seven months ago now. What was it? Uh, spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. Did it go down well? Oh, yeah, we're not Good right man. Down. It's easy to forget. Some of these prisoners are here for serious offences. How long are you in for? Four years. Four years. For doing what? Uh, well, they found a shotgun under my bed. They found a shotgun under your bed? Some of these people are quite dangerous. You may get people screaming and shouting at you because you're, you know, you're famous. So they might, they might want to have a pop. Please don't rise to it. No, no, no. We'll, no we'll, we'll deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's yeah, definitely. We're, we're good at it. No. The mood has suddenly turned, and an offender is kicking off. All I can hear is my name. It's amazing how quick it kicks off like that, all of a sudden, bang, in a heartbeat. One minute is silent, next minute, it's like a potential riot. These are men under pressure. And when men are under pressure, they can do so bad you, things. What kind of things can happen to them? What were they, an argument, a fight, uh, throwing could, something? Could be anything. Anything. Could be anything. Tough job, Tony. The enormity of what I've taken on is starting to sink in. In 2010, there were over 14,000 assaults in prison and nearly 3,000 attacks on staff. Recently, someone got their throat slit. Just a guy jumped up behind, toothbrush, melted in and slit. Um, that's the kind of things that go on. You can feel it, there's like a sort of... It's a huge weight of pressure in here, almost like it's bursting. It's so intense. Didn't seem it at first. For every hour I'm here, it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm in Brixton prison, where I'm trying to put the prisoners to work. They're going to cook on the inside to sell on the outside. It's time they paid something back. A posse of these bad boys are curious about my plan, and have agreed to meet me in the chapel to hear more. There's 22 in all, from robbers and drug dealers to burglars and thieves. They're here for a reason, and so you can get complacent about these guys and, you know, and forget what they're actually here for and what they're capable of. They will lie to him, they will try and manipulate him, because that's what they do. I, I've got to get these guys on my side. 
I think I've got to install a little bit of um, confidence. I have to do a bit of ball and Ramsey's grub. That's why I'm coming. Can't wait. See what it's all about. We've been through a bit of grub, decent bit of food. Starving. Hungry, very hungry. I'm not here to improve their grub, and this isn't going to be a fancy food treat for them. David Jones! Come on, David Jones! They aren't the most flexible of people in the way they think. Not with just seeing how a kitchen works and how disciplined it is. To get prisoners to do that, on it very hard. The whole idea is getting up close. A chance to see what they're made of. Morning, guys. Morning. How are we? Good, all right. Sorry. Why am I here? To build a kitchen and to get a production going and give you guys a chance to earn and learn and put back inside. Is our graft in it? Is proper graft in it? Yeah, it is proper graft. Listen, let's be honest. You get out of it, we put into it. What made you want to get involved with this? It's a good question, really. Um, 20 years ago, I got dealt a dysfunctional card. My little brother became a heroin addict and my father became an alcoholic. What do I do? Do I sit there and join my little brother? Or do I become an alcoholic alongside my father? No. I got off my ass. I stopped for feeling sorry for myself. And I got on with it. Put my head down, learned a craft. And that's the journey I'm hoping that we're going to go on. Thank you. I think he played it well because he's, he's, he's told us a bit about his, himself, his history, how he, how he became a cook, and, you know, he's told us about his family. I have less than six months to kick this motley crew into shape and try and mould them into a kitchen outfit that can pay its way. Have a seat, fellas. Just chill out for a moment, OK? But can any of them even cook a simple dish of scrambled eggs? Can I spot any talent here? Anthony, hi. Little task. Little plate of scrambled eggs, please. A burglar, Anthony Kelly, aged 33, is a career criminal, having spent half his life in and out of prison. What job did you have before you got in Brixton? Do you know what, Gold? I've never worked, mate. I'm ashamed of it to say it, really. I've always ducked and dived and got to no good, mate. I'm, I'm embarrassed about being in prison. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm ashamed about what I've done. So, just ducked and dived all my life. Sniffing cocaine, 10 years of age, I could div. But um, that was that. I was in lockups, in and out of lockups all my life. <laughs> when was the last time you made scrambled egg? Um, at home, with my old woman. Nice. Um, yeah. Hello, you, you're getting romantic now. Yeah. Did it go down well? Here's your colour, mate. Here's your arm, mate. Behave yourself. How long have you been a cook, Gold? Uh, 45 now. Last month. Um, so, yeah, 25 years. Better than football? No. You're kidding me, aren't you? Yeah. Football's you still play football, though, didn't you? Football's 90 minutes. Yeah. Cooking's 125 hours it's a week. Graph, isn't it? <laughs> right, little taste. That's fucking filth, isn't it? Disgusting, isn't it? If it was an omelette, it'd be alright. It'd be alright. Uh, Next up, 45 year old Londoner, Lawrence Gibbons. Uh, Is that a spelling mistake on there? Nine convictions or 79? I've got, uh. 69, no, 69 or, yeah, 69, no, 76 convictions now. Yeah, what some people call crime, we call it the way of life. My first, my first thing was uh, robbing post offices. This time it's assault that I'm in for. Whereas before I've been done for drugs. The fascinating thing about you, we've yeah. been at school together. I was 45 last month. How come you look older than me? I don't know, it must be all the money you've got, you know what I mean? <laughs> Please. Have a little taste. A bit too watery, a bit overcooked. It's becoming apparent that I'm starting at rock bottom here. We've got a leak in the ceiling. What's all that water? I don't know. It's burnt. It's a little bit burnt, but... A little bit burnt? Yeah. This lot can't tell their ass from their elbow. Tesla Jones from South London has been in trouble with the law since he was 12. And first time in? Um, no, no. I've, I've been in several times before. 
I'm doing it several times, yeah. Right. I actually like grew up in prison. You understand? I spent most of my, my teenage years in prison. The opportunity that I've got now, you know what I mean, maybe I'm the next Gordon Ramsay. Maybe I'm the black Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> you never know. Mm. That water coming out the side, what do you think that means? Um, what does that mean? It won't cook long enough. No, it's overcooked. It's overcooked Other way, yeah. yeah. I think Tesfa's willing to work hard, but he's a disaster in the kitchen. I didn't anticipate they would all be quite so useless. None of these reprobates has a clue how to cook. Long day. Uh, that's a tough one. Quite a few decisions to make now. They're all shit. Ready? He has got another job, and, I'll t and do you know what? I fucking don't know how he's going to do it. He's got to be himself, I think. Don't try and be over fucking old. Fuck this, fuck that F word shit. Fuck all that. I mean, they grip your hands, they shake hands with you, and they let you know. Don't fuck with me. You know, a sort of chilling feeling because you're just. This is five minutes from my house. I'm feeling like I'm the vulnerable one now, walking around with a target on my back. Ultimately, my bad boys will be cooking on the inside to sell on the outside. It's not going to be easy. And first, I've got to convince the prison governor, Ed Tullett, and his team about my plan for a working business kitchen. <sighs> Morning, everybody. Morning. This is the beginning of an ongoing project. The objective is to stand alone kitchen that can be a proper business within the prison. Kitchens can function from £1,000 a week to, you know, £50,000 a week in turnover. The dream would be for it to make money, generate income, and put back in. We are, we are a pretty cynical bunch here. You know, we've seen projects come and go over the years, and what we're really interested in is something which is sustainable and going to last. That's the bit going forward that slightly worries me, because kind of getting a business out of this, keeping the kitchen going, working it around our regime, it's going to be a massive task for Brixton. I know it's a big ask, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, my, 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 my balls are on the line. Being in a prison is not the same as being or working on the outside. The offenders, you know, you can't underestimate that they are not always an easy bunch to work with. They're not used to working on a nine-to-five basis. They're not necessarily used to, um, to coming to work and being told what to do and then taking it the right way. It is a very new thing for them and they have to get used to it. In six months' time, I want to leave this prison with a, a proper working commercial kitchen. So right now I've got 22 incompetent prisoners and that's just way too much for me to handle. I'm going to scale it down and get a dynamic 12 for my bad boy brigade. None of this lot can cook, but are they any good at anything? I've devised a test to see if any of them can learn to cook or sell what we cook to make money. If they can't do either, they're out. Good morning. How are we? We're going to make some fairy cakes. <laughs> What are you laughing at? I love your fairy cake. You like fairy cakes. What's the secret of a good fairy cake? I have a fucking clue, but I like it. Now, I want to see your imagination go wild. I want you to decorate it with some finesse. Show me what you can do on top of a cupcake. Yeah? Now, this thing here, the kitchen kitty. I want you to look at that box and take it serious. We're going to sell those cupcakes. We're going to split into two teams. Half of you will bake, and half of you will try to convince our prison officers to buy your cupcakes. I'll be a seller. You'll be a seller. I'm a seller. Can you get your hands out of your pocket and stop playing with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah, no, no, but I, I need... I, I, I need to see you. I need, please to see me. <laughs> OK? All the baking team have to do is follow my simple fairy cake recipe. Put the butter, put the butter and your sugar. Put the butter in here. Who put all the salt in there? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I couldn't see it. You got glasses I just on. Put them on, didn't I? A pinch of salt, what does a pinch mean? Like that. They're all committing GVH against cakes round here. 
Guys, 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 look at me. All of you, stop. We've all put the fucking butter into the flour. Fucking hell, who would have thought a fucking cupcake would fucking... <laughs> Throw that away. Jeez. Really a lot of call for cupcakes where I come from, you know what I mean? The prisoners just can't concentrate. My head's everywhere. <laughs> David Jones, an ex-soldier, is addicted to heroin. He became a thief to feed his habit. Yeah, don't worry, it's not too hard. Back in the oven for 30 seconds. Oh, like that? Yeah, just like that, and I'll, I'll, I'll help you again. I haven't seen my family for 20 years. I knew what it was like either on drugs or without drugs, you know? I was a bastard. I don't want to fail. I'm sick of failing. You know, I'm sick of not getting somewhere or not being someone. Habitual offender Lawrence does seem to care about what he's doing. They look like they've just gone ponied up, didn't they? They're fine. But if we rush them, they're going to be raw. Then you're poisoned officers. How's that going to go down? Hell, you know, say la vie. Holy crap, who would have thought cupcakes would be so difficult? David Jones struggled. I just got carried away and completely screwed his up. But uh, personally, I thought that was going to be a disaster. Lawrence seemed to know what he was doing. I do cook sometimes, but it doesn't hurt to learn something, does it? Like, I've had pubs before through my life. If I'd have been out to cook properly, maybe I'd have done different things in my life and not ended up back in jail. Those not cooking cakes are selling them. There must be some sharp entrepreneurs here. They need a brand. Hey, with the name, I reckon we should call it Sweet Tooth. Who's on there? No, Con's cakes. Yeah. It's five by Gordon Ramsay made by convicts, yeah? Yeah. By convict, oh, convict yeah. cupcakes. That's, convict that's, that's, cupcakes. That's the headline. Yeah, yeah that's fine. It's just got to stand up. Cheapest cakes in town. Oh, come on. Let me just write it down, bro. Let me just write it down, man. You've got that in one's record. I'm listening to everybody, but I can't listen to five people at the fucking same time, man. Now these domestic goddesses are going to decorate their fairy cakes. Let the imagination go. And don't forget, we're selling these. It's great decoration that sells a cupcake. Put the glitter on at the end, otherwise you're going to be going back looking like a bunch of fairies coated in glitter. Designs range from disastrous... Your fucking nozzle's got to go inside the bag. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. <laughs> to the delectable. It's a customised cupcake. Wow. SP, innit? That's my nickname, innit? And the downright dodgy. Nice. What's the theme? This one? Yeah. And he's in the space, innit, with the stars. Yeah, that, that's you fine when you're, on, when you're on crack, but you're not on crack now, so we're not on fucking space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the glittering should be sprinkled lightly. Fucking hell. I like someone's had the runs on top of that one. I am not going to sell that, yeah, next to that. Let me tell you. What, which one would you buy? This one. Thank you very much. But one burglar has done a lovely little job. Did you seriously do that? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's nice. It's not too bad. Yeah, I'm very nice. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Beautiful. That one, that okay. One, that one, that one, like no, we're not. No, no, no. No, you're not going to have that one yourself. We're selling them. <laughs> Stop. Come on, trick. No, 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 no. We're going to sell them. Back in the cupcake marketing department, the ruthless criminals can't resist a little bit of glitter. Convict cupcakes poster designed by Tesla over there. You know, we uh, you know promoted your name in it so we could sell more. Right. You know, real taste of prison. I like the colours. The convict's cupcake shop is popping up just outside A Wing. You'd like the four? Yeah. Brilliant. Selling them are my hustlers, Anthony Kelly and Tesla Jones. I think you like cakes, didn't you? Push, push, push. They've got a customer there. Tell them James, you can't wait. Some more lovely looking ones. They're made by prisoners inspired by Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, pick it, pick it out, pick it out. Thanks, Aaron. They can start earning some legit cash here. Only a pound each. I wasn't going to charge you two quid, but you look all right. I'll charge you a pound. Great. Do you want a couple? Yeah, can I have. F3, one of it. Strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. Well done. Did you take the pound? Yeah, I'm watching you like a hawk. I'm damn right I'm keeping hold of the fucking kitty box, let me tell you. You can see that's going to disappear. Oh, one that's very pink. You want one that's very pink? 
So that's 49 quid we've taken, 20 of which is profit. And this little box is beginning of something pretty major. Because if I can turn 40 quid into four grand a week, mm. it's going to take a lot of yeah. sweat, yeah. pain. Yeah. Now I'm going to think long and hard about who from this group will make my final 12. Are you scared of hard work? I'm not scared of hard work at all. I've done it in the past, you know what I mean? It's just that it, I think it depends on what I'm doing. The big question is, when was the last time you worked 60 hours in a week? Straight work? Yeah. Never. Never. I've been in Brixton prison for a week to get prisoners cooking on the inside to sell on the outside. I've got six months to make my project a success. What job did you have before you got at Brixton? Do you know what, Gold? I've never worked, mate. I'm ashamed of it to say it, really. The government want to double the numbers of prisoners grafting and are looking to expand their working prison scheme. It's easier life in jail than it is outside. In here, you've got everything done for you. But even the Justice Secretary believes prisons aren't delivering as they should. They obviously don't work. So if it don't work, you need to fix it. During the cupcake test, I observed all my convicts up close. And back at home, I'm going to choose my 12 bad boys for my brigade. Where do you start? It's been hard to get 12 because they're all the same. They're all shit. And they're all, they've all got issues. Why should they be sat there 18, 19 hours a day in a non-productive cell doing jack shit? <sighs> Lawrence Gibbons, Joe. He's 45 years of age, 79 convictions. And where the hell do you start with that? How do you get this guy disciplined? I don't care about any of the victims in any of my cases all through my life, all right? But if I can better myself and get something out of it, it's better than doing nothing. Thief Tesla Jones is a career criminal. He's been inside seven times. If you're in prison and you're serving a long time, you start to get used to your whole surroundings. They call it institutionalised, yeah, right? You start to get institutionalised and, and it becomes nothing. It becomes, it becomes a holiday camp. These men don't even understand the concept of an honest day's work. Anthony Kelly, he's never had a job in his life, and yet he's got the gift of the gap. Burglary, and you look at him, he's a big sort of happy-go-lucky, almost like a big puppy. Who would have thought he's going to be putting a balaclava on at half past two in the fucking morning? It's weird. It's almost like they go inside, they get sentenced, and they become little boys. Prison don't change people. People change themselves. So I think I've just got old. I've got, I've, had, I've got tired of it. I've got tired of this old bollocks, the same old shit. Listen to these fuckers tell me what to do, Joe, when they want. I mean, I'm sick of it. I'm sick to the back teeth of it. But you know what? You've got everyone's got to have enough pain before they stop. What I got to look for is the passion, the hunger. This is not sat on your ass. We're going to hopefully generate, you know, a, a busy, bloody kitchen. I've chosen my bad boy's dirty dozen. This is the team who will work in my pilot business. Guys, come over. Come over, come over. This lot don't know what's going to hit them. How are you feeling? Good morning, you good? How are you? You look cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's cold out there. Come on. We've got to warm up, though, ain't we? We've got to warm up. Just take that jacket off. Yes. You are cold. Yeah, yeah. OK, you want me to take my jacket off? Take the jacket off, see how warm you get. That's it. That's he, it. He grew up in Scotland. He's used to this. Yeah. <laughs> OK, here's the good news. You're the final 12. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, you're on fire this morning. <laughs> Each and every one of you are going to be putting back into this prison. You are the first 12 to get this business going. It's not about pissing around with glitter. This is real, and it's going to get tougher. We're running a business. You're going to learn, yeah? You're going to earn, and you're going to put back inside to this prison. How's that make you feel? Great. Yeah. Good. Sound, well. Good. Can't wait to start grafting. You know, and here, get in the kitchen, start cooking. A lot of these prisoners, we all need tough love. This is like the love your mum will give you. I remember, we're in prison. We need to be bloody told off. This is my first day teaching the Bad Boys Brigade. 
To get more done, I've radically changed these prisoners' routine. They're eating in the kitchen, not in their cells. The guys that we lock up here, they know, they know when they're going to get out of their cell, they know what time they're going to be locked up. Any change to that, it messes the system up, it messes with their head. But when things change, that's when, when, when things start going wrong. Sure enough, just the idea of change has sent Lawrence Gibbons off on one. What's wrong? He hasn't got all these sources and stuff, like... I'm paying money to buy sources and stuff. We can't even go through. We can't buy things from, like, you know, monster. He's thrown a hissy fit. He wants to eat in his cell where he keeps his tomato sauce. Yeah, let's go. Go and get my sauces from over there. We are. Well, 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 you know, man. Listen, we've got a minute. Let's just calm down, innit? Yeah, and get on with it. Lawrence, what's the matter? I'm not hanging about here. We're not having the weeds. I have my fucking lunch. Yeah. And use my sauces that I've got. Please go away with that. Is that you done completely? Well, that's it. Could you, um, could you take him back to the wing, please? Losing Lawrence is bad enough, but his walkout spreads dissent in the ranks. <laughs> Fuck him, let him crack on with it. Not much teamwork going on here. You're talking rubbish, but the man wants his sauce for his food, bro. I do understand. But it's still, the reality is the bigger picture is shitting it. Yeah. It's still the bigger, but what I'm trying to say to you is the bigger picture is shitting it. Even, yeah. even, even when he's yeah. done it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to make dinner for the entire prison. So what are they like generally getting up early in the morning? It all depends if anyone's been watching the late film. The brigade can't cook and constantly bicker, but if they pull it off, my business may be in with a chance. Thank you. It's so quiet. I've got to launch a product made by them to the public in a month's time. It's so quiet. I mean, it always feels like we're breaking in. It's weird. But there's an eerie silence. Morning, Rennie. Paul. It's 6.30. My brigade is a man down after Lawrence walked out. Hello, mate. We've got two minutes. Yeah. Right now, I need all the help I can get, and Lawrence is one of the best cooks I've got. Tempers aren't going to fade that bad that we're going to chin someone. Do you know what I mean? See, I'm in here for violence. Sure. Do you know where, uh, where I come from on this one? We're the same age. There's a quite a nice level of maturity. No, no, I'm serious. You're quite a calm influence over them. Do you know why? Because you don't tolerate the shit. And I'm not here to push buttons. I'm here to help. The last time I catered for 800 people, I had a team of 45 fully trained chefs. This time, I've got 12 novices who couldn't make scrambled eggs. At least Lawrence has agreed to come back. Let's go, guys. Quick, quick, quick. Ronnie, let's go. Come over, guys. The 800 prisoners always eat in their cells, but we're not improving prison food. My aim is to see if the brigade can carry this off. If they can, I might finally have a team. We're, we're 30 minutes behind already. Five main courses. Start off with a chili. Halal, 150 portions. 250 portions of a normal chili. After that, we got two vegetarian dishes. One vegan, one vegetarian. 50 portions of vegan and 100 portions of a vegetarian bake. After that, we're going to do a chicken and mushroom pie. 100 portions. Uh, guys, guys, yeah, I need the veg, yeah, so I can start the stock. Once I've got the stock rolling, I can start actually making the chili, which we've got 400 portions of. Veg prep is 90% of the battle. I'm taking a really big risk and putting argumentative Tesford Jones in charge. T, yeah. you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah look at me. Yeah. Nice and calm, yeah. and we're working as a team. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, you're part of that team. Yeah, that's so I want you to come across like a team member. Right. Let's go. We've got to do 40 trays. Yeah, I've got some long for now. Look how bad these potatoes are, eh? Yeah, this is what we get in prison. This is what we've got to work with. Everybody on the outside can see that we're not living in luxury. Eh? As you don't think. You won't put that in your pot, would you? Hmm? I've never seen anything like what Gordon Ramsay's doing. I'm not saying that he's, he's, he's going to change me and I'm going to come out, I'm going to be a big change man and, you know what I mean, I'm going to heaven all of a sudden and stuff like that, but it's something that you can hold on to. One career criminal I want to stop ducking and diving is Lawrence. I put him in charge of the main dish of the day, chilli con carne. Portion-wise, you've got 260. 240. 240, and you're doing 160. Lawrence is up against it. Fresh chillies. He may not be a team player, but he's not afraid of new experiences. I've tried most things. I think the best, the best thing in like the late 80s, what early 90s, was the drug, the drug game. Everyone had a good time. Pastry, how are we doing? You got shortcuts on the bottom, puff paste on top, yeah? Have a look for it in the fridge. Cockney Anthony Kelly is running the bakery section. They've got 250 portions of chicken and mushroom pies to make. Mix the margarine and flour, and a bit of baking powder. Just common sense, really. Just what it says, do what it says. That's it, lovely, lovely. Come on, you're not feeding the queen, you know that'll do. <laughs> we ain't feeding the queen. You tell that to the boys on the wing. We've been going two hours. The pies are on track, but elsewhere, we're in trouble. We're running behind, and the vegetable section is backing us up because we're, we're struggling. With 800 servings of roast potatoes to prepare, Tespa and the veg team are in deep waters, and it's freezing. What do you mean it's too cold? Yeah. Bring the... Bring the... Oh, bring the oh, what's the matter with you? That is too cold. <laughs> Get out of here, will you? That's... You're freezing. What's the matter with you? No, I love you. Do you want some gloves? No, it's a wetsuit right. to get the potatoes out. I'm beginning to think these prisoners are mollycoddled. Do you know what I'm starting to see so early on? What? I think it's too easy. 
you know I mean? When one of the boys told me last night he was watching telly all night, Lawrence, yeah. I can't watch television all night. Well, I, watch, I, mean? so I watch TV from 4 o'clock this morning. So it's easier inside than it is on the outside? If you can wangle the system and get what you, what you need, what's best for you, then you, you sorted it, haven't you? Everyone's banging on about the reoffending percentage, but you can see why it is. Almost it's like a sort of a little personal hotel in their neighbourhood. Which is so wrong. I can't believe it. The bakery section is flying. Anthony and David have got 11 huge pies ready. David's barely, you know, standing up. And Anthony's sweating like a pig, do you know what I mean? So it's like a, it's like a kitchen of misfits. However, they're not giving up. That's the most important part. One, two, three, four. Six o'clock in the morning, we've been here all fucking day. We've worked our bollocks off. Fair play to us, eh? You know what? sit on a foxy wheel and run to the fuck all, innit? And you know what? This might be the turning point where I'll never come back to prison again. But I'll become a good father, I'll become a fucking be there for people who love me, do you know what I mean? Instead of letting every fucker down. Half an hour to go, and my main courses are almost done. OK, steam, yeah. rolling oil, yeah. back in and roast. Work as a team, guys. But Tessa and his team still have 40 trays of potatoes to roast. Get them out. Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. 7.20, 3 times 10. You've got 11.20, yeah? The final orders are in from the wings, and Lawrence's hard work has paid off. His chilli is ready. Have a taste. Oh. It'll get stronger as it comes out. Yeah. Huh? It is nice. Mm. When are they going to pick it up? A couple of minutes. Two minutes. The boys are pulling out all the stops. This has been a massive task, and I think I may have a team at last. Yeah, we're ready, we're ready. Ten of us coming here today, we've worked our bollocks off all together and, the, and everything's on time. And do you know what? I bet the food's better than usual. Dow's gonna give the call. Concentrate. Don't start shouting over each other. Roast potatoes, one wreck. I feel like you've done something, innit? Productive. See, so if you was at work, that pain would equal money. Come on, I need to be calling G Wing for their tea in a minute. Yeah. Chili con carne. I'm coming. Coming's no good, living up. Four of us basically made dinner for 800 people. I'm off to G-Wing to find out what our customers think. It looks much better than last time. It looks better than last time? Yeah, I can see onions on top. Last time it was just black color. Oh, really? On oh, no, a proper onion gravy? Yeah, you can see the difference. Right Where are you from? Lithuania. Lithuania. It's a lovely Dublin, mate. What do you have? The halal? Yeah, halal one. Halal chili. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Lovely, mate. Bellissimo. Um, I honestly didn't think we were going to make that this morning. We set them a task. I didn't think it was possible to pull it off. And I was slightly concerned that they were going to shy away from six, seven... Eight hour day. But they've been on their feet ten hours. And it's been a long one. But it's, it's, gone, it's gone well. God, they were lively, huh? Unfortunately, it's not all good news. Back at the kitchen, there's been a serious incident. Right, guys, let's go. T, Lawrence, I need you for two minutes, please. Seriously, guys, this is where I think that I've been let down today, because I've just been told that we've found this in the dressing room and someone's been nicking Onions, chilies, and garlic. Oh. Look, 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 guys. No, no, really. Yeah, yeah, it makes me feel stupid. We cannot steal from the kitchen. Anyone? Right. Who does this belong to? I took, I took some onions. Yeah, I, took, I, I, I wasn't stealing it. I just took some onions. Okay. I thought they were spare, so I took some onions. Okay. Who else took it? Okay. Thank you. We cannot take anything out of the kitchen. Next week, it'll be a knife. No chance. We stop now. I just saw it as a bit of, as a perk, innit? I just saw it as a perk. I took a couple. Oh, look at me. T. So I can cook, in, cook T. myself. Yeah, that gets me yeah. into serious shit. I, I, so look I, at I me. Wasn't thinking. But you're letting me yeah, down and you let your team down. It's dealt with. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I just thought there was extras. Yeah. What I don't want them to do now is falling out and arguing with each other. That's the problem. They get one little issue and it becomes massive and they flip. 
What a fucking joke, what an embarrassment. Yo, don't say to me nothing, yeah? Easy, easy. It's all done, yeah? it's all said and done, bro. You don't know what I mean? You know what I mean? Once the rowing starts, no one backs down. This lot will argue about anything. You want to suck someone? Simple as. Yeah? Hey, guys, guys, let's finish on the high. Yeah. Let's finish on the high. Even got let's not waste ten hours of graft. Yeah. I can't believe, after all their great teamwork and success, my brigade's falling apart in front of my eyes. Oh, okay, now. That's all I'm saying, innit? No, no, no. Because you lot think and taking it out and everybody else for it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back. You're missing out for everybody else. That's it. From today, I'm finished. I'm finished. What's going on? I'm just coming back. You know this call. Someone's not doing it. No, that's it. There were some good workers there today. I mean, some really good workers, and the ones that I thought weren't gonna work and stay focused did. Yeah, I'm over a barrel in many ways because I could, I could be six short within a 30-second argument, and that's that's the knife edge. My biggest problem is going to be keeping the team together. That's where I, that's where I've got my work cut out because there's so many feisty, insecure characters that is almost sort of built on a stack of cards.